Seventh-day Adventist church member Paul Miller fears that he will be disfellowshipped or stripped of his membership tonight for apparently speaking out on his local radio talk show. He claims the issues discussed on his show are viewed by the church as against the church's principles, but he feels otherwise. Disorderly behavior. The other one is going to be based on start a divisive or unruly organization. The other one is going to be on won't take in orders from the leadership of the church. Our educational system was mandated by God, what we call the blueprint. These are the things we have strayed away from. And as a result, we are not where Christ said we should be. He said we should be the head and not the tail. And as a result of me trying to urge them that we're going in the wrong direction, here's where God will want us to go based on the Bible and the spirit of prophecy writers by a prophet by the name of Ellen G. White. They think the radio airways are not a place for that. And I'm like, what's for us is for them as well. This is Prophetic Insights. I'm Hillary Henriquez. I'm Andrew Henriquez. We're addressing an issue that is but a microcosm of what is taking place throughout Seventh-day Adventism, and that is the disfellowshipping of members for standing for the principles of present truth, for publicly proclaiming the principles of present truth, which by so doing will inevitably bring one into a position wherein sin and apostasy is exposed for what it is, and also for conducting and authorizing meetings and evangelism without the oversight and without the authorization of the conference. A few days ago, I received a phone call from a friend, a brother in ministry, Paul Miller, the founder, speaker, and director of BBN, the Bible-based network there in Nassau, Bahamas. And in that conversation, he informed me that his local Seventh-day Adventist church, Centerville Seventh-day Adventist church, its pastor, elders, board members, along with the conference president of the Bahamas conference and his administrators disfellowshipped him this past Thursday, September 10th, 2015. Even though I knew of the steps leading up to this excommunication, when it happened and he told me, I was somewhat hurt and shocked at the same time. So I asked him in that conversation, what charges did they bring against you before the church? And as Brother Miller began to share with me, he said, let me send you the, let the actual letter itemizing in detail the charges that they brought against me, which were false. And as a result, they excommunicated me and my ministry this past Thursday. You know, Pastor, it's, it's really with deep sadness that I read this, this, the charges that were brought against them because I see that they are baseless. I see that they're unbiblical. Mm. And I'm just gonna read this letter that was sent to the pastor. It says the following reasons constitute the grounds upon which the church board is recommending disfellowship in accordance with the church manual. Disorderly conduct, which brings reproach upon the church, adhering to or taking part in a divisive or disloyal movement or organization. And three, persistent refusal to recognize properly constituted church authority or to submit, submit to, to the order and discipline of the church. It is very interesting that he was excommunicated. Brother Paul Miller was excommunicated from the Seventh-day Adventist Church because he broke the policies of the church manual. Notice those statements were not referenced from the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, but from the church manual showing that they have used the church manual as the creed 
which supersedes the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. There are many things in the church manual that go against Absolutely. the principles of the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. That's right. And it's, it's just interesting that the church manual has the ability to change <laughs> every five years. You know, does the word of God change? Does the spirit of prophecy change? Not at all. It's infallible. So why then, as you pointed out, would a manual that is fallible and a manual that changes is being used to disfellowship someone? But the letter goes on to say that the business meeting will be held at the Centerville Seventh-day Adventist Church on Thursday, September 10th, 2015 at 7 p.m. At this business meeting, the recommendation to disfellowship you from the Centerville Seventh-day Adventist Church will be discussed. It continues, it is our hope that even at this time, you would make significant, appropriate changes and support God's organized remnant church. So even in this letter, an appeal is being made that he submit to the control and the authority of the conference, not live out the convictions of, of his own conscience. You did agree to do that when you answered yes to the following vow before your baptism some years ago. It states as follows. Do you believe in church organization? Is it your purpose to worship God and to support the church through your tithes and offerings and by your personal efforts and influence? At this time, you are receiving tithes and offering and reproaching the church with your influence and personal efforts. You have even been involved in organizing baptisms without any authorization from the organized Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Bahamas. Because of the extent of BBN ministry, which is a radio broadcast by Brother Paul Miller and his team, they also hold Bible studies and hold various convocations on the islands there in the Bahamas. And based on their influence, because not only are they influential in the Bahamas, but their ministry extends worldwide. And what was going to take place September 10th, 2015, this disfellowship meeting, it was picked up by the, the news media outlets and they ran a story reporting on what took place. And right now I'm going to share with our viewers what this news media outlet said. Take a look. Yesterday we told you about Paul Miller, a radio host on the Bahamas Bible-based network. Well, Miller faced expulsion from the Centerville Seventh-day Adventist Church. Our Jayad Higgs attended the meeting and tells us the outcome. Those are supporters of Bible-based network radio host Paul Miller, who stood on the outskirts of the Centerville Seventh-day Adventist Church, singing and praying in protest as the man who they call their radio pastor sat inside awaiting his fate as a member of that church. Um, he's my motivator, my encourager. In the night time, I just sit down and listen to him. And a lot of days, what he says really encourage me. And then I love and the things what he's be talking about. I know this be the truth. It is the truth. The protest comes after Miller apparently refused to be governed by the church's rules, especially during his radio broadcasts. He's also been accused of bashing church leaders and not following its principles. Not to confuse his personal views with that of the church, Miller was asked to read a disclaimer on his station as the church reportedly received many calls regarding his shows. Now during the heated meeting, church leaders, members and Miller addressed the matter. The church laid out the grounds for coming to its decision and even played clips of Miller's bashing. While some members stood up for him, others told him that he was wrong. Miller also got the opportunity to speak, asking what he had done wrong. Church leaders explained that rules are to be adhered to and members must abide. In the end, the Centerville members sided against Miller. First of all, the evidence that they produced against me last night, that was, that was first given to me last night. They, they never gave me the evidence that they, that they, that they um, used to turned the church against me, more or less I should say. Um, so what I did was, and after they did, their presentation was for like at least two hours and a half, I should say. 
And when I go out to defend myself, I had 10 minutes. Responding, President of the South Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventist, Pastor Paul Scavella, expressed concern, saying the matter is being dealt with internally. However, he did say we are all entitled to our personal views and opinions and responsibility to, to take care of ourselves, but we must be obedient to the laws of the church. Additionally, he says the SDA church has a reputation of sound biblical teachings and we are governed by the rules and regulations based on the word. Meantime, Miller says he is not deterred and he will continue to spread the word. Reporting from the newsroom, I'm Jared Higgs. You know, what's truly unfortunate and sad and heartbreaking is that while these allegations, the members bringing against the allegations and the conference officials and pastors, etc., they're given limitless time to express the charges against Paul Miller. As he said, he was only given 10 minutes. 10 and minutes. you know something? It reminds me of John Huss when he the reformer, when he was brought before the council, he was not given a fair hearing. You know, they were allowed to express all of these false charges against him. But when it came time for him to express himself, he wasn't even given an opportunity to do that. When I spoke to brother Paul Miller about this, leading up to September 10th, 2015, when he was disfellowshipped from the Seventh Day Adventist Church, he shared with me the pastors and the conference officials, the conference president, sent him a letter stating that these are the things we want you to implement in your ministry. And if you do not follow these guidelines, we are going to excommunicate you. So what happened was because Paul Miller and his team at BBN did not implement those policies from the church leaders, this is one of the primary reasons that they disfellowship him. Now, I want our viewers now to listen at some of the things, terrible things, that the conference officials wanted Paul Miller to implement in his ministry. Hillary, read this for us. He was admonished to form a board. Excuse me, not admonished. He was told, directed to form a board. This board must include two persons appointed by the conference administration. Pause right there. Does that not imply that the conference wanted to take over and control the operations of BBN? Everything, we all know everything is governed by the vote, the majority vote on any board. All right. So if they can place two of their officials on BBN's board, all, all, all they have to do is to influence other board members to side with them and vote with them. And by and by, they will have the majority on their side and take over the ministry. This is all about control. Yes. And the point we need to understand is this. What happened to Paul Miller is happening all over. There are many ministries that we all know that started out truly as a self-supporting ministry but now conference officials are now sitting on those boards and have taken over those boards and the vision that these ministers once had in doing god's work that vision has now become the vision of the conference isn't that denying liberty of conscience Verily so. Yes, it continues. Now, there are several uh, recommendations or several directions that were given to Brother Paul that he must follow. We'll not take the time to read all of them. We're just highlighting yes. a few of them. So the next one says, ensure that any guest speaker invited for your programs are vetted by the local field so as to ensure the integrity of the messenger. Again, what does that spell? That spells control. control. That if, if Brother Paul Miller and his team at BBN were to invite speakers in, they cannot unless the conference officials give them the okay to bring these speakers in. Then if the conference officials say, you cannot invite this one or that speaker, they cannot do it. This is 
a repudiation of a person's religious and civil liberties. Right. That means not only will the conference officials control the speakers, but also the messages wow. that would be proclaimed. I want to read another letter that Brother Paul Miller shared with me. Before you do that, Pastor, let me just say, it also shows that, um, you know, it also shows that they don't have trust in Brother Paul Miller's uh, ability lack of to trust. discern. They have a lack of trust. This is your member. You know, he, how, how many years has he been running this BBN radio station? And I really wondered as I read that, I pondered. I said to myself, now, I wonder if a conference church, one of the local churches there, were to hold an expo or some type of a, a campaign or a meeting, and they were to invite a non-Seventh-day Adventist speaker, ministry, singers, which I'm sure they have done, they certainly have in other uh, SDA churches around the world, would he have to go through such a, a screening process or would they just bring him in? Well, let me say it this way, wonderfully put, but let me say it this way. Here is Brother Paul Miller and his team, and this is not about exalting a person sure. or a minister or a team. That's right. This is the principle of what's going on, right? Right, wrong, light, darkness, truth, error. Now, you have Brother Paul Miller and his team trying to work to do everything to prepare souls for the mark of the beast crisis, the second coming of Christ, and they are the ones being excommunicated because they are presenting present truth and exposing apostasy both in the church and in the world. They are being excommunicated. But when a local Seventh-day Adventist pastor uses the books from Rick Warren mm. and other infidel authors yes. and have modern-day calf worship practices and style in their churches. Worldly musicians. You name it. Yes. They are not excommunicated. They remain right there in the church. They're Le applauded. To the contrary, they are applauded and praised. May I read now? Because they bring in more revenue. Listen what this says. This is another letter, and this was signed by the president of, all these letters were signed by the president of the Bahamas Conference, Paul A. Scavella. Listen what it says. And this was written and distributed to all the pastors. And the pastors were to read this on Sabbath morning to all their churches, all their members. This was what they did to occupy the Sabbath hours. Listen what this says to the members. It says, I find it necessary, my dear brethren, I find it necessary to write you on the negative effects of Bible-based network and its leadership. Accordingly, I ask that you do not associate with BBN by your presence, financial support, or the like. Additionally, I have asked each pastor to share with you in details areas of concern that we have noted as relating directly to BBN, its leadership and ministry, signed the conference president. That's interesting, interesting. So why, think about this, why then did they excommunicate this fellowship, Paul Miller, from the Seventh-day Adventist Church while he was an acting, active member of Centerville Seventh-day Adventist Church? Well, for one, he didn't want to submit to their control. And when they realized that they could not control Paul Miller or BBN, they had no other choice but to disfellowship him. Was he disfellowshipped for immoral practices? No. For mishandling, misusing funds? No. For infidelity? What was he excommunicated for? Simply for standing for the principles of present truth and for having the audacity to expose it publicly. Calling sin by its exactly. right name. And does inspiration say the greatest one of the world is the want of men, men who would not be bought Art or, or sold. sold, men who in their innermost souls are true and honest, men who would not be afraid to call sin by its right name, men who will be as true to duty as a needle is to the pole, men who would stand for the right though the heavens fall. This is the work 
that Brother Paul Miller and BBN team have been doing. I know them personally. I have done two series of meetings. I have left America, went down to the Bahamas, Nassau, did meetings with them. I have personally met individuals who were once not Seventh-day Adventists, but because of BBN, this radio broadcast medium, right? All through the islands of the Bahamas and even as it extend and extend on the internet, these individuals were baptized by pastors in the Seventh-day Adventist church. These individuals now became Seventh-day Adventists, attending the local Seventh-day Adventist churches. Yes. But now, uh, the pastor of Centerville Seventh-day Adventist Church, the conference president of the Bahamas Conference, is now telling everybody that Paul Miller is the devil. They even wrote a letter saying that Paul Miller is the Antichrist and wow. that the pastors were to read this to the churches. They said BBN is an anti-Christian movement. BBN is anti the spirit of prophecy. BBN is anti the church. Wow. BBN is anti God. BBN is anti grace. If you don't believe me, contact Brother Paul Miller, you will see the letters for yourself. Now, if Brother Paul Miller and his team were doing the work of the devil, the Antichrist, how is it then that souls who were non-Seventh-day Adventist right. heard that message and were baptized? Right. If, if, if Brother Paul Miller and his team were not doing God's work on the airwave, right? How then could people hear the voice of Jesus hmm. and be baptized into the Seventh-day Adventist church and attend the local Seventh-day Adventist churches? So we need to understand now the bigger issue that anyone who holds meetings without conference approval will meet the same fate as did Brother Paul Miller, his team, and BBN. And do you not see fear going on here? Yes, it's just a fear tactic because now that Paul Miller is excommunicated from the church, he's disfellowshipped, he's no longer a Seventh-day Adventist in their mind, anyone who associates now with BBN and with Brother Paul Miller and the meetings he holds, they too will be disfellowshipped. And it's just a sad thing that many, because of fear, they'll say, oh yes, I appreciate the work he's doing, I, that it's truth as the Lord liveth, but yet because they cannot uh, stand, you know, they cannot withstand that, that persecution, the verbal persecution, the name calling, the fact that they're considered out of the church and, and their chances to go to heaven are, are, <laughs> are gone. Basically, they're going to allow that fear to control them and they're going to remain where apostasies are and they're going to stay away from the truth. And it's unfortunate. Do you remember for the past few weeks, here at Safe to Serve, we have been emphasizing how we need to learn truth and to stand on truth. And we shared a Bible study dealing with the fear of excommunication necessitates the proclamation of Protestantism. Yes. I want to read this now from the book Great Controversy, page 84. This is John Wycliffe a Protestant reformer. Listen to what he says. Wycliffe began to write and publish tracts against the friars, not however seeking so much to enter into dispute with them as to call the minds of the people to the teachings of the Bible and its author. He declared that the power of pardon or of excommunication is possessed by the Pope in no greater degree than by common priests, listen now, and that no man can be truly excommunicated unless he has first brought upon himself the condemnation of God. In no more effectual way could he have undertaken the overthrow of that mammoth fabric of spiritual and temporal dominion which the Pope had erected and in which the souls and bodies of millions were held captive. The Amen. pointer is Amen. Wycliffe had to lay down the truth That's right. that 
if a church excommunicates you, as long as you have not grieved away the Holy Spirit of God, you are not excommunicated as far as God is concerned. You are still a part of God's church. Amen. You can read John chapter 9. You see that clearly. Yes. You can read that in John chapter 7, John chapter 12. It's all throughout the scriptures. I'm wondering now, what about some of these elders and ministers who want to affiliate themselves with Brother Paul Miller? Now that he has been excommunicated, I'm wondering, are they going to still associate themselves? affiliate with brother Paul Miller his team and BBN we are told you know your friends when your back is against the wall hmm. yes as we were discussing this earlier our minds just were taken back to Ellen White when she was but a child and her family were excommunicated not because of immoral uh, conduct not for any character reasons or not for any improprieties of any sort, but simply because they adhered to the Advent message, the Millerite message, the message of Jesus is soon coming. And they were, they were disfellowshipped for it. It says here in Testimonies for the Church, volume one, page 43. The next Sunday at the commencement of the love feast, the presiding elder read off our names, seven in number, as discounted from the church. He stated that we were not expelled on account of any wrong or immoral conduct, that we were of unblemished character and enviable reputation, but we had been guilty of walking contrary to the rules of the Methodist church. Notice, contrary to the rule of the Methodist Church, not the Bible. Have mercy. Just as we are showing and reporting this account with Brother Paul Miller and his ministry being excommunicated from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. History is being repeated. Oh yes. He also declared that a door was now open and all who were guilty of a similar breach of the rules would be dealt with in like manner. Let's pause there. So they're trying to make an example of Brother Paul Miller yes. here. What happened to him will be your fate if you associate with him, if you dare conduct any form of ministry without our authorization or approval, if you even attend meetings from ministers and ministries that are not connected with the conference, this will be your fate. There were many in the church who waited for the appearing of the Savior, and this threat was made for the purpose of frightening them into subjection. In some cases, this policy brought about the desired result and the favor of God was sold for a place in the church. Many believed, but dared not confess their faith, lest they should be turned out of the synagogue. But some left soon afterward and joined the company of those who are looking for the savior. Amen. At this time, the words of the prophet were exceedingly precious. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. And that scripture is Isaiah 66 and verse number five. As, as you read that, I was thinking about the theory of let the wheat and the tares grow together. I really believe it's time for us now to be examining some of these theories that we have been hearing within Seventh-day Adventism. And these theories are erroneous and they're trying to get us to silence the voice of stern rebuke, the voice of present truth. Think about this. What is the option that they gave to Brother Paul Miller? Let the wheat and tears grow together. Basically, you sit down and do not speak up. Sit down and be silent. As one pastor once said, he said, what we should do as Seventh-day Adventists, even if our pastors are in apostasy, just glue your rear to the chair. Then what did they just do to Brother Paul Miller? They excommunicated him. Basically, they were saying, if, even if you glue yourself down, you could take the chair with you. 
That's basically what they did. Yes. And yes. this is showing us, as long as individuals stand for truth and do not keep silent, that they will not be tolerated in the church as long as the ministers are the tears. The ministers are in apostasy. So when Christ says, let the wheat and tears grow together, he was talking to the disciples. They weren't tears in that, in that sense. They were to be the spiritual leaders of the church. Yes. The tears must grow where the leaders are standing for present truth so that the tears can become wheat. Amen. And the wheat must grow where the leaders are proclaiming and living present truth. Why? That they being the wheat can remain the wheat. Because the Bible says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. You yes. know, let me read the statement here and then we close. In Great Controversy, page 181, it says, the deputies had admonished the counselors to continue in the church out of which they declared there was no salvation. Zwingli responded, let not this accusation move you. The foundation of the church is the same rock, the same Christ that gave Peter his name because Peter confessed him faithfully. In every nation, whosoever believes with all his heart in the Lord Jesus is accepted of God. Here truly is the church out of which no man, no one can be saved. As a result of the conference, one of the bishop's deputies accepted the reformed faith. You know, when I traveled to the Bahamas and held those meetings with Paul Miller, and again, these, these meetings were at a different location, not in the Seventh-day Adventist local church. As I saw what was going on, I knew this was coming. And I, I remember, I mean, you were there with me. Mm -hmm. And I remember even saying to you, I can see Matthew 26 being played out here. You know, when Christ said to those disciples of his, he said, tonight, the shepherd shall be smitten and the sheep shall scatter. And if these individuals around BBN were not educated spiritually for this crisis, what do you think they're going to do now? Since Paul Miller, quote unquote, has now been smitten by the brethren, excommunicated, they are going to what? Going to scatter, scatter. and remain silent, unfortunately. So we have to pray for them to get back to the Bible, to get back to the spirit of prophecy. Since God prophesied these things would take place, they are taking place, then his word would tell us what to do, how to move forward. And the first thing is, as Christ told them, he said, watch and pray. Amen. That is where you get strength. Brother Paul Miller, BBN, and the team, and the rest, it's time to watch and pray. It's time to fast. It's time to see God like never before. He will give us strength. And number two, number two, it's time now to remain encouraged. It's time now to move forward. Not to go sit down now. If God, since God called you all to do ministry, it doesn't matter what these men have said. You have to go forward. Go forward. You can yeah. never put your hand, your hand to the plow and look back. You have to move forward or else, look at me carefully, or else you will receive the frown of Jesus Christ. None of us want that. It's time to move forward. I, I can truly say, that when Brother Miller, the last communication with he and I, he said that it, it's official now. They have uh, uh, excommunicated, disfellowshipped me was his words. Disfellowshipped me. But praise God, I have not been disfellowshipped by Jesus. Amen. So he's staying encouraged. He's staying encouraged. Amen. And he's continuing to move forward in the work of God. And that's our prayer for anyone else who's going through similar issues as well, that you remain encouraged and that you realize the issues of religious liberty. Because as you plan to stand in these last days, you are going to be confronted with liberty of conscience being threatened and being denied, not only from the world, but first, the first test 
will come in the church. And unfortunately, if we do not pass this test and if we're moved by fear, how are we going to stand when the mark of the beast passes? So stay encouraged, stay in God's word. I'm reminded of a statement in Acts of the Apostles, um, page 69, where it says, a thus saith the Lord can never be replaced by a thus, thus saith the, the church, church. Amen. or a thus saith the state. And so this is your creed. This is your mandate. Move forward in the strength of the Lord and in the power of his might. And you will receive a crown of life as you stay faithful. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we're thankful for this crisis. For your word says in Romans chapter eight, all things worketh together for good to them that love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. Prepare us to stand for you in these last days. Be with brother Paul Miller, his family, we all know he just lost his mother. His mother went to sleep. And look at the crisis that has now fallen upon him just a few weeks after his mother went to sleep. Be with his father. Be with his, his, his brother. Be with his sister, the siblings. Be with them, dear God. Be with the team around him. And I pray for even others who are going through similar attacks from the tears within the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Lord, keep us faithful. Help us to watch. Help us to pray. Give us strength to stand for you, though the heavens fall. And we know we can stand, even if we have to stand alone, because you, Jesus Christ, our Savior, you stood for us and you stood alone. Please give us that same strength so we can stand for you in these last days. Save us, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Again, we thank you for watching Prophetic Insights. Maranatha.